the the sponsor bit. Do you want to do that bit? Are we recording, Jamie? Yeah, wonderful. Hello, everybody. Welcome to the uh, Outlaw Picks podcast. Um, we have we have uh, Vortex as our sponsor this week. The yes. food is delicious at the Athlete Factory in Chester. We went to see uh, Paul Reed, who has is a man of many many talents and has lots of knowledge. But they've he's set up a meal prep company. Yeah, who uh, are going to be providing stuff for your training camp, and the food is amazing. I had Cajun chicken yesterday with some kind of creamy cheese pasta sauce and spinach and broccoli. What was yours? I had. I don't know. It's like buffalo chicken oh, with just, noodles and vegetables. I was a little bit jealous. I didn't get to try it, <laughs> if I'm honest. But it was, it was amazing. So make sure you check them out. What's the website? You've got the website pulled up? Yes, combatsportperformance.org. So what they do is they, they can do like several things for you. Like if you don't know what weight class you want to go to and you're unsure, you can go and book in a DEXA scan and they can uh, check your resting metabolic rate and all that stuff. This is something that I did before uh, the last camp just to see where I'm at, what calories I need per day. And it's just so structured to how everything is to from how you lose weight so if you do their NCC program you can do it from you know you, you don't have to be in chester to you go have it on your do phone it. Don't yeah you? i have it on of, my phone yeah. and then that gets programmed in and you know paul's paul's the best man he you can awesome, message yeah. him at any time and he's super dedicated so it's just like i've trained with a lot of coaches and i feel like i've trained with them and yeah. with paul is like it's a pleasure to have been yeah. allowed the opportunity yeah, <laughs> to be trained by he's, him he's very good but the, so the meal prep, uh, you're, we've just picked up a week's worth for for this week, haven't we? Yeah. So Chester. what you got? Two meals and a snack every day. Yes. Amazing. L- really, really good food. Delicious. Smells great. I'm just eating regular food and li- and smelling the co- the stuff that you're cooking, and I'm I'm a little bit jealous. Yeah. So even honest. though I get meal prep, I still have to prep meals for you. Oh, what? You don't have to. You oh, don't come have to. on. No. What are you going to have? Ketchup beans on ketchup. one <laughs> slice of bread? Have you, <laughs> have you ever heard anybody call beans what on toast they? ketchup what beans? What are they? Beans. They're beans. Uh huh. In what a sauce? tomato sauce. Okay, ketchup. Ketchup. <laughs> that is watery ketchup sauce. <laughs> there is nothing else. Look, it look, taste I like, like ketchup. I like beans those ketchup beans i love them they're great for you know in the breakfast and stuff but to have a and i'm just gonna get so many british people will be mad at me but it's okay because i know that's the only thing you know how to make <laughs> oh you, you just you, you literally you were like you're like set it up apologetically to 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 call names on the national dish of beans on toast and then you just you just follow through with a with a cross hook cross. <laughs> oh my god! Just finishing How many times shot. have you and your dad said that? Like, oh, like I can do it. It's simple. You should have mushy carbs on mushy carbs. No. Hey, I'm against it. It, it works. Mushy, mushy <laughs> <laughs> ketchup sauce. No. <laughs> we got so off track. Got me anyway. through training camps. <laughs> got me through training like, camps. Like one of the good things about the uh, the meal prep thing is that they have this crazy machine called like chill freeze. So at that's first, what you need. You need some chill freeze. I need to put you in that machine. <laughs> Be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it, fr- it freezes the food. The food is cooked. It is as it would be on the plate as it comes out yeah, of the but kitchen. Like instantly. And then it just like like ice age. Like it. <laughs> it's crazy. Yeah. Like Pompeii when they're kissing. Pompeii. <laughs> no, that was ash. It doesn't turn the food to ash. That's yeah. the wrong thing. It's too much heat. It's too much heat. But you get the reference. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> Freezes it instantaneously. Ice Age was better. What was that movie, oh, Jamie? No, Star Day Wars with the Han Solo guy. The what? What do you mean, the what? Oh, um, no, what was it we were watching? Is it on Ahsoka with the guy with the... With the who's with who's the guy with the ice that we've just that was some kung anyway, fu look. movie. Oh, Listen, it was, we need it to was, get into it. Was. It's you that's taking us off. Check tangents. out combat. Uh, what is it? CombatSportsPerformance.org. Honestly, if you are man, if you're sick of ketchup beans, <laughs> no, like as an athlete, I just <laughs> I cannot recommend him enough because he his first priority is your safety. It's not him, you know, <laughs> trying out some crazy new YouTube video strength conditioning that he saw. He doesn't care about that. He cares about you being safe, you not getting injured, and you going out there. So it's, yeah, stop Instagram s and seeing and get yourself someone good. Okay. Now can we crack on? <laughs> okay. Okay. You get distracted. You wrote the me. testimonial last week. You've just read the whole thing out again. 
Well, people need to understand. <laughs> no, he's very, very good. And the food is incredible. Okay. So um, we're going to do main card because we're, we're, we're busy doing other things. You've obviously got a fight coming up. Training camp's going well. It's very fun. We've been, we've been going over to Renegade, which is excellent. Yes. Leon Edwards' knowledge is incredible, and he is very, very generous with his time, as well as Fabian as well. I mean, it, like, he <laughs> like he even he had a great performance against Eblin. didn't go his way in the end, but he was back in the gym a few days later on the mats, coaching, just a really, really good vibe. And Joby Clayton is a is a, a Jedi of the striking arts. So that's been a really so good funny. gym. He is very funny. Oh, my goodness. He's so funny. Um, and uh, soon we're going to visit the guys at uh, GB Top Team. Which brings me on to my first point. Nathaniel Woods on this card against uh, Mohamed Naimov. Yes. Um, we're not going to cover the, the whole card, but there are a couple of fights I do want to talk a little bit about. Like, Nathaniel Woods had some really bad luck. Like, that knee injury that he had where he cut his knee open on, you know, in, in the gym. Yeah. Um, it's He's just had some bad luck. But in his last couple of fights, he seems to have really kind of settled into a style that suits him. Like more elusive, more footwork, more strategic about how he's how he's attacking his opponent and switching his stance. Um, I, I I don't know a lot about Ni- about Naimov, but um, I'm I'm just excited to see Nathaniel Wood back in there because I know how I know how unfortunate he is. It, it, he's been of late. Plus, it's a short notice match for Nathaniel Wood. Yeah, and he recently got married. So congratulations. Yeah. Oh, of course, Naimov's coming off that win over Jamie Malarkey. Yeah. What what yeah. I find like really cool about Nathaniel Wood is why I feel that I feel like he's settled into the weight class because mm-hmm. of course he went up a weight class and he's not you know he's not the tallest fighter yeah. and if you're going up in a weight class unless somebody has seen you half die dehydrating God, he was and so it's lean like, wasn't he yeah Do you remember that photo he posted where he looked, he looked like he's he, like a ro- like a road map of veins yeah. jeez yeah. And that was before dehydration. Yeah. And he's got, you know, experience advantage here, 19 and 5 against uh, 9 and 2. Yeah. He has solid footwork, great little trips yeah. where, where you're in front of him and he's like trading shots with you and you're thinking about something and then he throws a, like a trip or, or a leg entanglement in, not not like an Imanari roll, I mean like a like a leg hook, like yeah, judo yeah. type. <laughs> yeah. He's, he's, he's very, very good. It's a lot of fun to watch him spar and there are a few guys down at GB Top Team as well that... Uh, are able to push him, you know what I mean? Mm. Like really good rounds that, that he gets. Um, the other fight as well, of course, I'm excited about, just before we get onto the main card, is Mohamed Mokhaev against Tim Elliott. Like, Tim Elliott is he's a veteran. He's been around for a long time. He's got a really unusual style, but he, he makes it work for him. He kind of drifts between like Sandhagen, like switching stance heavy on his lead leg to kind of bouncing in and out a little bit. Great scrambles. Um, Mokhaev 9-0. and Really yes. good. Great back taking, strong wrestling. Right at the beginning of his career, I feel like this is a. It could be a changing of the guard opportunity here for Markayev. But Markayev needs to stop getting like in trouble. In trouble. Yeah, like that knee bar that he was in. Oh, that was bad. That was like that. I thought he was. I thought he was going to have to have a surgery after that, just based on the 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 amount that his knee was bending. Yeah. He's super flexible. He said he. he but he said he heard it like. Yeah. Ugh. Disgusting. Yeah, but you just you know. I don't really think Tim Elliott has like an ACL though. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> that's, that's the other thing. Like, if I had to choose a fighter who doesn't have an ACL, Tim Elliott would probably be up there. So what's? Let me have a quick look at the stats on this one. So, uh, see, this has got topology and UFC stats have got the records different. Why is that? So, you um. Tapology's got Tim Elliott at 19, 12, and 1, and Mokhaev at 9 and 0. And UFC stats, come on, has got Tim Elliott at 20 and 12 and 1. That'll be the, the ultimate fighter, won't it? Mm. And then Mokhaev at 10 and 0 with one no contest. Anyway, both 5 7. Uh, Mokhaev's got a 4 inch reach advantage. Um, can significantly less strikes landed per minute by Mokhaev, but 10% more accuracy. Um, good striking defense by Mokhaev. I, I don't know. I mean, I, I, I just think, I think this is, a, this is going to be more about Mokhaev kind of allowing Tim Elliott to, to establish a rhythm and then counter striking him as he tries to move in. Like, especially, especially cause he's, he, he's going to require a bit of patience in this fight because Tim Elliott's going to be sharp shooting. He's very good at springing off the back foot and leaping into range with those like kind of slide by punches. 
the, the sooner Markayev gets his hands on him and gets behind him, I think the better. Mm. But he's got to be cautious closing range. Especially because Tim Elliott just throws random stuff up yeah. the middle. Yeah. And he, and he does that a little bit of that Dominic Cruz shifting like little, side yeah, to uh -huh. side. And then it can kind of draw you into to watching him. Yeah. Like you can kind of find yourself, not that I think Makaev will do that. I feel like he wants to just go in, get a quick finish, be super impressive, mm. you know, right off into the sunset, obviously. Um, but yeah, just be a bit cautious because he's so, sometimes with fighters who are more awkward, you have to be more cautious because mm -hmm. they're not going to do the right things. Yeah. Yeah. And that's when you can get caught because it's like, oh, I didn't think. That was even logical. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're you're setting him up for a counter cross and not thinking about the spinning back fist that he's decided he's going to throw next. Yes. Yeah. You, On it, the spot. <laughs> yeah, 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 for sure. Like, there are a few things. Like if I, if I was if I was um, if I was in Markayev's corner, I'd get him working that little step back that uh, we saw Sean O'Malley catch Aljo with, mm. because Tim Elliott can be quite heavy on his lead foot and he can kind of lean forward and leave himself open. And, and I think with Mokhaev's speed and the reach advantage, you might be able to might be able to sting him at that range a little bit. Yeah. I, what, what, what he doesn't want to do is start level changing and Tim Elliott's just nowhere to be seen because he's, his footwork, he's bumped off to the side and sprawled. You know, mm -hmm. that would be really frustrating. I think like if, you, if he's going to, if he's going to take him down, he's got to close him down first kind of maybe contain him up against the fence a little bit with some kicks and then grab a hold of him just so there's less opportunity for him to, you know, yeah, burst out and wriggle away. That could be, it could be a frustrating night for him if, if that if that happens. Um, okay, main card. Should we talk about main card? Right, so we're kicking off with Muin Gafarov against Saeed Nomagomedov. So, uh, quick tail of the tape. So, we've got, this is all UFC stats as well, so if, if it's not the same as Tapology, then I'm not taking the responsibility. <laughs> um, so they've got Saeed Namagomedov 17 and 3 and Gafarov at 18 and 5. Uh, one inch height advantage for Namagomedov, uh, two inch reach advantage. Um, slightly higher strikes lander per minute, slightly better striking accuracy, better striking defense. Um, generally, I mean, the stats lean towards. Um, Namagomedov generally in striking, but then they switch the opposite way for Gafarov. He's got a higher takedown average, a better takedown accuracy. Takedown defense is pretty much the same, but then Namagomedov balances it out with his uh, sub average. Hmm. Um, I think Namagomedov's just going to try and make, keep this one on the feet and, and, and pick Gafarov off. You know, I, I think that uh, I think we saw a lot in Gafarov's last fight against Castaneda where so Saeed Namagomedov will capitalize with his striking. Yeah, especially because his opponent was a lot more. He was a lot more present in the exchanges. Yeah, and how he was do you sharper, his wasn't name? Castaneda? No, the other one, Guff. Gafarov. Gafarov. Yeah, Gafarov was kind of like poor his stance, throw a hook straight into. It was a bit. It was a bit too obvious what he wanted yeah. to do, and you know he was he got a point deduction, point taken away because he was leading in with his head, and he did earlier in the fight, and then complained to the referee when it was really him clashing heads yeah. not his opponent <laughs> but i just feel like uh castaneda stayed a bit more more present in the fight like looked a bit more into what yeah you're welcome you have Beautiful. amazing mugs flowery mo to drink from called Dog Rose. Dog Rose. <laughs> it's a beautiful flower and they called it Dog Rose. <laughs> anyway. So yeah, like he's just he's able to see these these openings a lot more. His opponent was able to see it with him because he was so oh, I'm just going to single mine. I'm going to get it to the ground, but not not in a way where usually I feel like with the wrestlers they'll have that approach where they get everybody down and they just smash everybody and then the level gets a bit higher. Mm -hmm. And then they'll try that same thing and get clipped with something. And then they go back and they're like, oh, well, this didn't work out. Now let me be more patient. And they start picking their shots a bit more. It seems like like a phase within the thing that all of them have had, mm -hmm. whether they have won or lost that fight. It, there, were, there has been a significant fight that has taught them that. Yeah. And yeah, I, I don't feel like Gafarov, Gafarov. Gafarov <laughs> has had that yet. Yeah. Even though he lost the last fight, he could be like, oh, the point deduction. Or... Yeah. See, that's the thing is he's got a lot of fights. He's had a lot of experience and, and he's he's picked up losses. Mm. So there have been opportunities for him, I'm sure, to be able to, I mean, you know, I'm, I'm sure he's, 
I'm sure he's had pretty much the same style the majority of the way through his career and it's been effective against most people. Yeah. But he's now getting to the stage where he's going to have to adapt if he's going to have any success. Like he's, what is his last two last two fights have been losses. No, he had, he had he lost and then he uh, won the one before. He had two two wins and then a loss before that. So he lost his last one, I've won got, by I've spinning got two back. Lo- two fit. losses here on uh, on UFC stats. Have they got that wrong as well? Let me have a look. On no, because he went UFC Fight Night, right? He lost to Castaneda. Oh, they they've taken. Sorry, sorry. So U- UFC stats have not included these fights that went in the UFC. <laughs> so oh, they've just okay. got him down as two losses. Yeah, sorry. So yeah. he was released after the the contender series split decision loss. He went and stopped two people. Yeah, Herbert well, Souza technically and Diego not Silva. released because he didn't win the contract. His contender series. Well, okay, yeah. So, all right. <laughs> what? You just bullied me today. I'm not bullying you. I'm just. Hey, I've Look, got, I'm just stats. addressing it before everybody in the comment section types <laughs> that out. And I have to go down to every comment and like it. And b- I don't want to keep seeing the same comment. <laughs> Give me something entertaining. <laughs> oh, so you're you're correcting me for the for the people in the yes. comments. Right. So, so everybody well, watching it right now was a, was like on their keyboard. They probably hate me now. They're like, oh, go. I was going to type that. <laughs> took it away so from for me. all your complaints, send them to Veronica at Outlaw Picks Podcast. That is... Uh, <laughs> um, <laughs> Yeah, sorry. So, so he went away and he stopped stopped two people, uh, both on on LFA, which is you know it's a, it's a good show. And he, the fi- fighters that he was up against, they had good records, like combined uh, records. They were what thirty and thirty and eight. You mm, know what I mean? Yeah. And he stopped them second and third round, both he with has strikes. Two spinning back kick knockouts. Yeah, love it. He has really good like single shot. Um, like body shots, yeah. which he used against Castaneda. Like sometimes when he would settle mm. and he would land a solid shot, you could tell that it was heavy. Yeah, he just he just kind of there's not a, there's not as much finesse to his movement as there was against as there was with Castaneda. Like that's that's why I feel like Castaneda was able to get the better of him, not because he he was like he had any more power, but because he was able to sting and move and switch his stance and and just kind of give him different looks. Yeah. Whereas Gafarov sent to be a little bit kind of hunt and stalk and punch and wrestle. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? It was. I, I just don't think that's a good matchup for Sayyid Magomedov because, well, first of all, I feel like his takedown defense is going to be good enough to be able to keep this one on the feet. You mean for the other guy? It is a good matchup for Sayyid. It's, it's, yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's not, it's not, it, the style that we saw against Castaneda is not a good matchup ah, for, for him, him okay. against Sayyid Magomedov. So, yeah. Okay. Um, because, because Sayyid Magomedov, for me, is stronger on the feet. His striking is, is sharper. It's like the Cody. Like, Dagestanian, but not primarily a wrestler. <laughs> it's like a pile driver yeah, with yeah, district sure. going drives. Like yeah. every time he yeah. is in the his last names are Magomedov, but he's not a wrestler. He prefers <laughs> to strive. Yeah. I always remember that. We that, should know uh, this by now. Who was it he fought in Fight Island where he hit him with that ridge hand? Like proper like long straight. I can't remember who it was now. Was it uh Ricardo Ramos? No, I don't think so. No, oh no, no it might that have been. wasn't. No, no, that wasn't. No. Left hook, Mark Sturgey? Yeah. Yes, it was. Yeah, Striegel. Mark yeah, Striegel. Striegel. Mark Striegel. Um, yeah, it was like a it was like a hook, but it was like a ridge hand. He caught him with the side of the glove. Um, it was quite cool. But you like you look at his record. So he's like he's stopping people with strikes. He's got f- four out of seventeen uh, uh, wins are knockouts, and he's got five submissions. But if you look at the submissions, it's like ninja choke, guillotine chokes. Things like things that are people level changing and him wrapping up and mm. finishing and he's that way. Slick with them. Yeah, exactly. And, and I can kind of see, I can kind of see him. Like I, I, my term that I use is bookending. Do you know what I mean? Like he's got him covered at this end of the game, and he's got him covered at this end of the game. So no matter where Castaneda is fighting, if he's fighting at range, he's going to lose. And if he's trying to wrestle, he's going to get guillotined. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. I kind of feel like that's generally the the, the way that the matchup's going to play out. I can imagine Sayyid Magomedov being able to catch him and hurt him and wear him down over probably 10, 12 minutes and mm-hmm. then maybe maybe guillotine him in the in the end of the second, early third round. I agree. That's my prediction. What do you reckon? Yeah, I'm going with Said. Yeah. Um I mean By it, what? I'm gonna go with guillotine. I'm gonna go with like like a high elbow guillotine. What round? One oh three of the third. 
Okay. You laugh, but imagine, just imagine if if at 103 of the third, Gafarov is tapping against Sayana Magomedov. Yeah, but you can't say that. I'm just going to take this clip and I'm going to get Jamie to 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 put some like like zapping lightning. Hey, oh, Jamie, this is the clip to put the zzz, zzz, and I'll look like a genius. Yeah. Sometimes if you, you weren't just kind of given this whole out of explanation, there. look, you just you had to say round three, <laughs> one o three. Look at the camera, straight face, and then go. Oh, is that right? Bam! Oh, next well. one. Yeah, but if you give an explanation of well, in case it's a lucky out. shot, look, we can edit this bit out. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> we can fix it. In the, it's gone, and we're back. And we're back. Look, right? Okay. We're not back. Jamie left it. <laughs> <laughs> I remember that I was filming a breakdown show once for BT Sport and we sent them the oh, yeah. file over. And you remember there was a mistake in it. Like, because I used to do those in one shot and I'd, I'd sat and I'd recorded this thing, sent it over to him. And there was just a bit right in the middle of the show where I just kind of made a mistake and I went, oh, you're like, oh. I had a drink and went and just kind of restarted that bit and they just left it in there. <laughs> but yeah. Yeah. Anyway. But that's what Jamie's going to do, and he's just going to leave this bit in. Yeah. Yeah. Especially now you've given him that evil training camp stir. <laughs> that's the I'm hungry stir. <laughs> Where, nah, when, I'm not hungry. Next... I had apple flapjack. <laughs> <laughs> Mama's eating good. Yeah, yeah. But but let me explain to you what she does though, because well, she savors this. Oh, Andy, it's the Eminem story I forgot about. If you say the Eminem story, <laughs> <laughs> not Eminem the rapper, as in the as in the food. Anyway. Um, I'm tired. And he just <laughs> he really messes with me. Look, I'm conditioning you. Couldn't get bear clawed in the face. Hey, I've got stats from training this morning from the from the mouth guard people that you kicked me in the head really hard. Okay, you said, "Don't worry, I got the defense covered." Well, I did. Go harder. I mean, I, I and was then fine. he complains about it. I'm not complaining about it. I'm just, you know. Trying to turn this into like a domestic abuse thing. Well, I say it to the other guys. Me. I'm like, I'm like, you're fine. You can let your punches go a little bit, and and then they and then they give it like another twenty percent. Whereas I say to you, yeah, you know, you can let it go. I've got it covered, and you're like, right. <laughs> let's, let's see how covered you are. Let's see, let's see how much of my foot I can wrap around the side of your head. No, it's fine. It's fine. It's fine. We got good statistics on the math guard. Anyway, I'm talking about top secret stuff. I can't be saying these things. You're still Je here, though. Gonna have aren't to, you? We're gonna have to. What? You're still here. Still, uh, I am <laughs> just about complain all I hear. Just about. Okay. Um, so next fight. Yes. Ikram Aliskarov. Yes. Against Wally Alves. Yes. Okay. Uh, Wally Alves is one of those kind of fighters that, like, he's a he's a he's a difficult fight. And no matter who gets the call up, they're like you've got Wally Alvarez, you're like, okay, so is he going to show up and be an absolute murderer? <laughs> is he going to train for this, or right? Not? Or is he going to show up like um, I'm going to win this fight? Relax, man. Somehow, so much, so. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Sometimes, maybe that's it. Maybe he's just a, he's just a little bit too because because he doesn't seem to be able to get momentum in, in the UFC. Like he came in with a good little streak. He had a few, um, like a few 18, finishes. Eighteen thousand guillotines. Yeah, like he had. He started Colby on Connington guillotine. Actually, he's got a ridiculous amount of guillotines. So he's got, hang on, so rear naked choke, guillotine, guillotine, arm triangle, guillotine, TKO, guillotine, unanimous decision against Alan Joban. Respect Alan, tough dude. Um, he was a good southpaw sparring partner for me back in the day. I was like, this guy's a model, he can't fight, and he can fight. He's got good jujitsu as well. I was very surprised. Did you and tell he's good him? Looking. He's got everything. Did, did you tell him, <gasps> why are you doing this if you're so pretty? He's an easy guy to dislike because he's got everything going for him, but then he's also such a nice guy. So you're like, well, I guess some people just get a great <laughs> hand of cards at the table. You're handsome, mate. Like, ah, oh, thanks. Thanks. You're welcome. Okay. Um, Nordin Taleb, another tough, very tough individual. Doesn't get the, uh, the, the notoriety that he should. Um, Guillotine choke. Guillotine choke against Colby Covington. <sighs> That's a big win. And then Brian Barberena spoiling the party as he always does. Pissing on the bonfire, raining on the parade. The spoiler, With Brian like Barberena. A yeah. And then he loses a decision to Kamar Usman. Now, now you look at it and you go, well, yeah, you know. But then he came back with two more wins. Then I picked up a loss to James Krause, he who shall not be named. <sighs> I hope he's doing all right. I've always been a big fan of James Krause. Um, Sergio Marais, awkward, weird dude, great jiu-jitsu, really odd striking. Randy Brown, lost, arm triangle, Munir Lazez, 
body kicks and punches. Great oh, yeah. performance. Oh, yeah. He did like right? one body kick and then he kicked him again, but the other two were to the arm. But I feel like the guy had just, matter. yeah, he was just, he was already going down. <laughs> it didn't matter. His, that was his ship was already sinking. <laughs> yeah. And then, and then, you know, the loss to Jeremiah Wells and then a split decision against Nicholas Dalby. Like, I feel like he like he's got everything that he needs. He just needs to. I don't know whether it's like a change of scenery or a, a, a change of. He's not even uh, old. No, he's thirty two. Exactly. Not doesn't even old. Look, he doesn't look thirty two though. <laughs> <laughs> That's from the Brian Barberena fight. I yeah, think. he looks significantly older. Yeah. I think Brian Barberena steals people's youth when he's fighting them. I think that's how he how he because uh, it was it Sage Northcote he was the spoiler of as well. Yeah, Am I, I think right? so. He had a few of them. He did, didn't he? Ba, 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 ba. I can't say his name and not think of the Beach Boys. I just think, hey, Macarena. <laughs> <laughs> That's weird. That's not the song I would think. <laughs> Listen, honestly, I don't know what's up with Barley. I feel, and I don't know him personally. I don't know anything, you know personally about him but i feel like sometimes he shows up and he's like all right i'm the best in the world right and other times he cannot be asked it's the, it's the veto belt situ situation he's like i'm i'm tired like, he was the same <laughs> let's do it like nicholas dalby i feel like <laughs> i don't know if he got tired of nicholas just <laughs> breathing <laughs> next to him. nicholas dalby's so never gonna annoying. stop <laughs> You were talking about that when you were watching the fight. You're like, <laughs> like of all things to be bothered about, it's like this guy's breathing too much. <laughs> like, how can you be thinking about what you're doing? You're breathing so loud. So I know how to distract you next time we're doing wrestling. <laughs> <laughs> no, but like, but it worked because he like he like out cardioed him yeah. and he like out hustled him. Yeah, and that's of course how he, did. he, he was Wim Hof breathing. Yeah, it was like. Uh, 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 Alvi went to the. You know what? This is not one of my days. <laughs> this is like <laughs> good. All right, you got it, dude. You know I'm sick of this. That's what it kind of felt like because yeah. Dalby was so like tenacious with his pace. Yeah, he is. He is very. Like but what, he's, one of the he's tricky. This dude. Yeah, who? Dalby. Uh, no, uh, Alves. Yes, yes, he is. Like yeah. he's yeah because is Alves, he's Alves. 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 Yeah, because Alves. he's got everything he needs to be a really successful fighter. Apart from the consistency bit, yeah, right. Like that's just that's just seems to be the bit that he's missing, and I don't know whether it's like a a confidence thing or a preparation thing or what. But like, if, if there's anybody to be to get motivated for, it's a person with a record of fourteen and one who's from Makhachkala, Russia. Yeah, right. Because like you know that doesn't matter who that person is, it's going to be a handful, and you're going to have to work hard for every position, and you're not going to be stopped. You're going to be pushed at every stage of the fight. I think this is a this is a really really rough fight for Alves. I think he might be picking up his third loss in a row here. Mm. Like this guy's this guy's dangerous. I feel like it's one it's one of the biggest or on topology the the difference. I just need to stop real quick. I did not mean to like bully down beyond his breathing. It's great. No, no. It's like it's effective and it's awesome. No, he's he's, he's going to be upset. I'm going to I'm going to have to talk I'm going to have to call him. I'm going to have to call him and speak to him and care. say, "Look, like he doesn't care." Hey, but I'm starting to like feel bad about it. He's, now. A, he's a very sensitive individual, Nicholas Dalby. No, he's not. No, he like is. honestly, dude, this is cool. I didn't mean to say it was <laughs> Okay. All right. I'm okay. Back. But the difference on topology is 3% Alves, 97% Alir Skarov. What, for, for for how people think the fight's going to go? Yeah. Well, I mean... I've never seen, like... Well, on this card, this has to be one of the biggest dif differences. It's got to be. That's got crazy. To be. Especially because Wiley is... Although he looks like he's, like, mid-40s... <laughs> He's not, and he's tricky, and he might just show up like, you know what, I'm going to... All right, doesn't matter. Listen, Ar Aris Karov. Alice Karov. The, so one one other thing that we need to consider as well is that this... Because we've talked about this consistency with Wally, it, it might be down to his weight cut or his preparation or whatever. He's going up to middleweight for this one. Hmm. So 
we might see a different version of him. We, it might have been, we might go, oh, yeah, okay, maybe he was just really struggling with the weight cut and he has a really good streak at middleweight. He, he might surprise yeah. us. Like, like Anthony Smith did the same thing, didn't he? Like he was a middleweight and it was like, he just didn't see him there at middleweight and then he moved up to light heavyweight and he went on this on a, on a streak and looked really good. I, I do think this is a really hard fight to move up into a weight class with though because this guy's got, he's got everything he needs i mean he's a he's a strong powerful individual with with good striking and it, yeah so for a first run out with for Wally at a different weight class like has he been a middleweight before let me see if let me have a quick look on his uh on his wikipedia and then we can get on to the next flight which is going to be nuts yeah at least oh, okay. like oh, okay, pressure okay. that he's had that he has when he fights is ridiculous. The way he utilizes his hip and kind of just he like. So here's something interesting. I didn't notice this. My mistake. Um, Wally Alves won the Ultimate Fighter Brazil three at middleweight, mm. and of course, like usually, what happens is people win, uh, win tough at the weight class above because they're having to fight so regularly, and then they move down when they. When they turn pro, when, when they turn pro, when they, uh, you know, yeah, going to the becoming the UFC fighter. But like, it looks like he's done the same thing. It looks like he's done the same thing. But then he says, Alan, I don't know. Alan Jabanit says a return to welterweight. I don't know. I think he's going to be a little bit undersized. I didn't do stats for this one, did I? Let's have a quick stats on this one and see see what the size difference is. And then we'll we'll see what your pick is. So 14 and 1 for Askarov, Aliskarov. Um, 15 and 6 for Wally Alves. One inch height advantage, four inch reach advantage for uh, Alice Garov. Um, higher strikes landed per minute, better striking accuracy. Uh, not as high striking defense, but of course, Wally's had a, 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 a you know, more UFC um, mm. fights to, to, to look at. Um, 80% takedown defense for Wally Alves. I don't know. I, th- I just kind of feel like Alice Garov might might just be able to kind of well, put... like Kimura him. I don't know. Like maybe, dude, his Kimuras are disgusting. Yeah, they are. He like grabs it and then pins it to you with the same with the same kind of frame hold that he that you do to take somebody down, especially like that style. And then he just kind of goes like pit stop to pit stop, <laughs> always applying pressure. Mm. Then gets his leg over your head. And it looks like he's going to chicken wing pop it out. <laughs> <laughs> so so he went armbar and guillotine in his early career. And then he, uh, after he's lost to Chemaev, which was April 2019, first round knockout, um, he then went on another six fight win streak and picked up three Kimoras in that time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Another I, I good person I've seen. Him, though. I think he might stop stop him with strikes. He's got five five wins by knockout, five by submission. Yeah, he I has he has gonna... like great targeting for kicks, and he mm. and he applies that angle change to his striking like he does to his grappling. Mm. So it it is yeah, that knockout of Phil Hawes. He was completely switched off. Wasn't yeah, he? he like touched it and found the mark with the other one. Yeah, which is always disgusting when you're able to do that. Well, I'm going to agree with what is it? Ninety-seven percent of topology. Yeah. Yeah, I'm afraid that I think it's a it's a a big ask for Wally Alves to step up to middleweight and beat this guy. Mm. Okay. Uh, what? You, which way are you going? Did you make a pick? No. Go on then. We don't care. Oh, that's not Sad true. violin. Oh. Do, 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 do. Go on then. What's your pick? Yeah, I'm, I'm picking Kimura. We're guy. not bothered. Okay. <laughs> Dude, I'm not cooking Dude, nothing, nothing for you. Nothing. nothing. <laughs> <laughs> no, I am gonna cook for you. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> you gonna like? It. Yeah, I'm gonna steal your meal prep company food. <laughs> I'm gonna steal the the vortex <laughs> buffalo chicken. <laughs> Ooh. Okay, I am. Um, so what do you think? Are you thinking Kimura? Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. I just think he's gonna Kimura. Which round? One, two, In three. In the first round. First round. First round Kimura. Yeah. Hmm. I think it's going to be like an early second round knockout. Mm, okay, we'll see. Mm. Maybe he'll be in a Kimura in the first round and it'll be really, really close and then he'll escape it and then get knocked out at the start of the second. So you'll have almost been right, but I'll have definitely been right. That happens never. Well, there's always a first time. Okay, um, 
this is a, a really interesting one. Magomed Ankalaev against Johnny Walker. Like this, I feel like this is a like a matchmaking gift. Like wh- like when they wrote this on the board at, at the uh, at the UFC <laughs> offices, they must have been like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, you're gonna like this one. Like uh, I mean, Ankalaev's scary. Eighteen one and one. Southpaw, like strategic, walks people down. The only time we saw him get a little bit excited was when Kutalaba tried to punk him and get him to draw in, and he almost bit on it. Mm-hmm. But he's normally very controlled, especially after that loss to Paul Craig. You know what I mean? It was like, like that was a that must be seared in his brain. Like he, he might even go down to middleweight and chase Paul Craig just to get that one back. <laughs> but um, Ankalaev against Johnny Walker is a, a really interesting fight. Really interesting. Johnny Walker settled down a lot since he's uh, is he still at SBG, isn't he? Yeah, I believe yeah. so. Yeah. He seems to have settled down a lot there because, I mean, the thing is, right, he's a, he's very explosive, he's very creative, he's a really big athlete for this weight class. But the the chaos sometimes was getting him in trouble and we've seen him hurt a few times. Like he doesn't, for whatever reason, he seems to take a punch really bad but recovers yeah. really quickly, you know? Um, overhand right. Yeah. <laughs> and the one other thing that we saw as well which might be really useful for him in this fight are those elbows. Who was it? He, um, hang on a minute. Oh, I know who you're talking about. Yeah, I can see the guy's face. Uh, Ryan Span. Yes. Bang, bang. And then those hammer fists. That could be really useful for him in this fight. Because especially if he's being awkward with his movement, and Kaliyev might be like, you know what, I'm going to... Yeah. I also like his his leg kicks that he's doing to the mm. calf and to the leg. Because if you watch uh, Jan Blahovich versus Ankalaev, mm. that's something that I feel like won him the first three rounds. Yeah. Just destroying the leg and, and also kind of because when your legs like that could so compromise it's not oh i can't use it and that's it it's mm. not like it's a detached thing you put to the side like, it is hurting yeah yeah and you're having to deal with that and and the fight in front of you and uh johnny walker's really been digging into it he just he just tends to to return repeatedly to it yeah. which i feel like ankle Ive might catch him when he does so mm with something like an overhand right, like Jamal Hill did. Um, but yeah. Yeah. Do the tail of the tape, mister. Oh, I didn't do a tail of the tape. Sorry, well remembered. Um, it's kind of hard for me to figure out how Johnny Walker is going to approach this one because like, Ankle Ive is just going to try and squeeze him up against the fence and take away much of, as much of his movement as he can. And then he's got wrestling in his back pocket. Mm. So like, really what it needs is good lateral movement from Johnny Walker and good counter punching. And to be a bit settled and quite busy and not not do anything wildly explosive that's going to either give him options for counterpunching or body locks and takedowns. Yeah. You know? Um, okay, so tail of the tape. Uh, Ankalaev, 18, 1 and 1. Johnny Walker, 21 and 7. Um, average fight time longer for Ankalaev. Bit more strategic, bit better pace. We've seen some really big knockouts really fast from Johnny Walker. Um Three inch height advantage for Johnny Walker and a seven inch reach advantage. That's wild. Six foot six, 82 inch reach. Um, big height and reach advantage. But again, it doesn't doesn't make a difference if he is squeezed up against the fence. He can make the most of that, but he's going to have to use his movement and his footwork to keep creating space for himself. Um, striking stats are, are fairly close as far as output, slightly higher for Johnny Walker, slightly better striking accuracy but more strikes absorbed per minute and a lower strike in defense. As we said, we, we, we have seen him um, hurt a, f- a good few times. Yeah. And honestly, I, like, I feel like in this one, it we're, we're most likely going to see... I mean, I, I just don't expect Johnny Walker, unless he's made real leaps in his game, I don't expect him to try and grapple in this one. Like the yeah. times when we've seen him struggle, was it uh, Nikita Krilov in Brasilia was able to out-grapple him? Like if, yeah. if Krilov can out-grapple him... He would have had to made big strides strides for I feel like he has made a lot of big strides. Yeah. Though. Yeah, like when um especially when he's grappling against the fence. Like he's he does a really good job at getting an underhook or a body lock and getting himself yeah, back up yeah. and I'm and talking then more about going on the ground. The back. Yeah, like straight like, straight ground. If he's taken down, is it you know, is it worth him kind of playing <laughs> on the floor or is it you know what I mean? That's that's what I'm what I'm wondering. Cause I, cause like my memory of Johnny of Johnny Walker is once he's taken down, he kind of he, he's not very good at getting back into good posture. Mm. But then if he's going to be working one thing at SBG HQ, then it's going to be gonna that, be isn't ups. it? Yeah, yeah. I, I feel like his get ups have gone uh, so much uh, 
better, like against Kutilaba. And I'm not yeah. saying Kutilaba is at he, that same grappling yeah. level, but Kutilaba has really good. You know, he's like from Moldova, has good wrestling, mm-hmm. has taking people down to the ground and stuff. And he was able to get back up and uh, sort of. He was just patient with his head movement and u- utilizing the fence to get that rear naked choke. Mm. And that that's something that we've seen big improvements of Johnny Walker is a little bit that patience that he has. Yeah. It's it's improved and you can see it in his game and yeah, I feel like it's it's helped him massively. And I also felt like it took him a little bit to settle into SBG. Mm-hmm. Does that make sense? Because mm-hmm. he was such a chaotic fighter sometimes when you just take that away, you take away a lot of yeah of what, of what makes that are. person yeah. who they are yeah for sure but it's it's for it's like one step back to make a few step forwards and yeah. i feel like now he's just he he's only taking steps forward mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. which yeah. is cool yeah what's your prediction hmm. i think ankle lives do you think do yeah. yeah what a decision or do you think he's gonna be able to stop him in some way What's his record I think he's going to be like Clive? more more inclined to try and stop him because he lost the fight for the belt yeah. as a draw. And he had Jan Bohovic down for the fourth and fifth round. And he was just like, it was quite a lot of ground and pound, but not uh, a lot of urgency to finish it. And mm-hmm. obviously you don't want Bohovic to get back up, your legs compromised, all these things. But I'm sure he, he, he might have thought, you yeah. know. Yeah. Like, oh, if I would have just went for the finish, if I was staple to finish on, then, then that. Because ultimately, what he wants is a belt, mm-hmm. right? So if you if you put on like a, a finished performance versus Johnny Walker, you're a lot closer to it. Yeah. It put him a step behind to to have the fight as a draw. Yeah. Which is why they gave the belt. Yeah. You know, I'd I'd love to know what I would, I'd love to know what Ankalaev, or even if he's keeping a record of it, but what his total combat sports experience is. Because like like so, what is he? He's had twenty fights in MMA, pro, eighteen one and one. But then you look at the rest of the things that he's done, like amateur MMA and combat sambo. So he had, he got first place in two thousand thirteen at the MMA uh, World Association, which you've got to imagine. You know, if if it's open to to him, it's going to be open to a a good portion of uh, even just Russian fighters that are going to be a high level. He took gold in that, silver the next year, and then gold the following two years. And then the Russian MMA Union, he took gold every year between 2014 and 2016. Um, and then Combat Sambo, uh, 2016, took gold in that as well. Like, you've got to imagine, that he, he's probably had a 100 amateur fights in across those <laughs> disciplines yeah. before he's even stepped into pro MMA. Which is why you see him be so patient in that. Yeah. Scary dude. Like I, I, I feel, I feel absolutely like, like this is a you know if they fought ten times for the first time, I, I would imagine Ankalaev's gonna gonna win, probably seven of them, you know, based on his footwork and his experience. But I don't know. I just kind of feel like like he might get caught in this one. Mm-hmm. I think it's gonna take him. Like if he rematched Johnny Walker, I think he'd have a better chance after he'd spent a bit of time, or if he'd sparred with him. Yeah. But I think the way that Johnny Walker moves and the size of him, as well as probably a few tricks up up the sleeve that John Cavan has uh, downloaded into his game, I think he might catch him with something. Th- this w- this might see Johnny Walker return into like that that vintage style where he's explosive and goes flying mm-hmm. through the air with a knee. Yeah. But he doesn't do it like he's button mashing. He does it like he knows the combo on the pad. Du-du-du-du-du. You know what I mean? And he sets it up perfect. Yeah. Usually when he's <clears throat> when he's in front of his opponents, he gives them that impression that he's going to fly at them at any yeah. moment, and it makes him kind of. He like, keeps oh. doing that with his eyebrows. Yeah. So. Like, <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Don't don't do that. Calm. Yeah. Like yeah. I'm, I'm picking. Uh, I, I'm going to go with Johnny Walker. Johnny Walker. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to go with Johnny Walker. I think it's going to be something mad, like a flying knee. I think we'd we'd do him returning to that style of fighting. Mm. And uh, you know, what's he on? He's, he's on a three fight win streak now. So he's had a submission. He's had the that those hammer fists, uh, the cross and the hammer fists against Paul Craig. I just feel like we're going to get something more explosive out of him this time around. An ankle eye of maybe maybe level changing because he's not sure of his of his movement. You know what I mean? Yeah. South Paul. South Paul. <laughs> you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. Interesting one that I'm looking forward to it. Okay. Co-main event. 
Mm-hmm. So co-main event originally was Paolo Costa, Hamzat Chemaev. Paolo Costa's out, although that would have been a really good fight. But I do feel like this this changes it a lot. Um, Kamar Usman stepping in. Short notice, moving up a weight class. 20 and 3 against 12 and 0. What do you reckon? Do the tail of the tape. Oh, okay. Sorry. Sorry. I'm, well, it's good you're reminding me because I'm. Uh, yeah, it's not. Yeah. I'm just now being more vocal about oh, okay. it. Oh, <laughs> okay. For the comments, for the people in the comments. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, thanks. Okay, so Kamar Usman, 20 wins and three losses. Uh, Hamzat Chemayev, 12 wins, no defeats. Two-inch uh, height advantage for Hamzat Chemayev, one-inch reach advantage for Kamar Usman. Um, average fight time, of course, is considerably longer for Usman. He is a 25-minute fighter, 17.35 compared to 5.01 for Chemayev. And the only reason it's 501 is because of Gilbert Burns. Mm. <laughs> like if you take that fight out, it's probably like down to two minutes. Um, fast worker, dangerous wrestler, comes in and grabs a hold of people and ragdolls them. He's very, very good at chaining his wrestling together one after another, after another, after another, until they're broken down. And then he does the same thing with his submission attempts, one after another, after another, after another. Really dangerous individual, but I just don't know as he can do the same thing to Kamar Usman. I feel like Usman, even though you know he's 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 a bit older now, and like something I was talking about with the sub radio guys, is, you know they were bringing up his age and his you know potential knee injuries and stuff. But I still think even if it's just for that first two or three minutes, if he's if he wrestles like like nothing else and he's able to keep the fight on the feet, we might see Chimaev start to hit that big breath and then start to walk forward into a boxing range. And then I think it's a really it's a coin toss because they're both got good basic boxing you know mm. they both got good good slight head movement good boxing defense crisp straight punching i got a theory oh, oh ooh. okay <laughs> this is a theory that doesn't apply to the main event because both of these fights fighters are coming in at short notice replacement mm-hmm. right so it doesn't apply to the main event okay but for this i feel like the fact that it's a short notice for uzman is actually better for him because he's he's just, you can tell the guy's always in shape. He's mm-hmm. not going to gas out. He's done five rounds. He knows what that is. You know, obviously not having to do a big weight cut will help him. And I'm not saying it's an easy fight at all because Kamza is, well, we've seen how, how good he is. And, and he's he's big. Mm. Like he didn't make 175 and that's why the whole thing he didn't find ideas. Like the whole point is he's now a little bit too big for it. Mm. And if it wasn't for Usman losing to Leon Edwards, then the is comes at fighting Usman next would have been a lot higher, you know, in the, obviously the belt's not on the line, but it would have been a lot more intriguing than mm. it is now. And it's it's not because he lost to Leon. Um, but I feel like Usman kind of needed a bit of a break, mm-hmm. you know, mm-hmm. like just a little bit of a, like a chill out break. <laughs> And that happens with with fighters sometimes. There's just you're going and you're going and you're going. You don't recover from injuries as good, and and you don't do a whole bunch of things that help you better. And you're so far, you know, so like thinking the sport so much that you miss on things that you would see if you just step back a little bit. Mm. And that was something that, for example, John Jones was talking about to Israel because Israel said he was going to take some time off. He was like, "Oh, those three years off was the best thing for my career." Mm. Because it, it was just, it's just like you're in the midst of it. It's a bit too much, especially yeah. with the media and everything and going on. And and I don't think Kamaru's been in the gym like, oh, I'm going to learn all this thing. Obviously, I've seen him do like fashion shoots and, and other things. But I feel like that might give him a refreshed approach to this fight. Yeah. And they, I think it was Ali mentioning that he was for Usman to fight um, – Bala Muhammad, maybe it mm-hmm. was it was somebody like that, and he was like, "Well, I'm not. That's like a championship fight. We want championship money." Yeah, yeah. So like, if you're gonna get me here, I've I've already won the belt and I've already defended it a whole bunch of times. I'm gonna go to to make money. Mm. I think this is a good move for him. I think it's I think it's it's gonna be healthier for him, especially at this at this age. You know, mm-hmm. what is he thirty thirty five? Hang on a minute, let me check. Uh, 36. So at this age, I think it's good for him to allow his body to to be a little bit bigger and not keep yeah. forcing himself down. And it's championship weight, so it was always 170 as well. 
Yeah, you know, 170. You, so. you know he's walking around at, at over 200 pounds. Yeah, for so sure. So he's still going to cut to make this weight. And I, and I, I feel like he's going to he's going to be less cautious at this weight with his gas tank. I mean, this is three rounds mm. and this is, you know, he's not going to have the same kind of weight cut. So he's not going to have to rely on his rehydration to bring him back to a state where he can compete hard for 25 minutes. I, I I just I feel like it's a it's a very very different fight to Paulo Costa. Like if I'm Chimaev coming in against Paulo Costa, I'm thinking right, well, he's a big he's a big dude and he's going to be difficult to move around. But I don't want to really be dealing with him at punching range because that's most likely where he's going to be best. You know, even if he's not landing clean shots, he's got crisp you know crisp technique, and if he's landing on the guard, it's still going to be heavy. So get inside, close him down and get on a body lock and just wear him out with that cycle of taking him down and holding him down and controlling the scramble, right? Yeah. But I don't, I, like, I feel like this is the opposite game plan. I feel like the smart thing to do with with uh, with Usman, if you're Chimaev, is to stay at boxing range and establish a jab and kick the legs and then consider setting up the takedown once you've maybe done two or three minutes worth of work. Mm. Because... Like even if then he starts wrestling three minutes in and he's able to take the fight down and take Usman's back and not finish him, he's he's not expended the energy at the start of the round. Yeah. Which means that if he fails his takedowns, he's now got two or three minutes to deal with Usman walking him down and power punching with confidence because now he knows that Chimaev's a bit more tired. You know what I mean? And and you just don't know what Leon what um what Usman's going to look like at one eighty five. Like he might want to come out and close range down and start power punching. Do you know what I mean? Like, I, I just I feel like it would. What what I think would be a benefit is to see Chimaev kind of kind of start a bit a bit more patient. Like I mean, we watched the Kevin Holland fight the other day, didn't we? Again, and he just he just pounces on him like mm. straight away pounces on him like a like a tiger taking down an antelope. Yeah, from and, the glove touch. Ex- yeah, well, not even. <laughs> <laughs> and and Kevin Holland did a really good job of keeping the scramble moving to a point. But then even when Chimaev got onto the neck attack, like he was he was like there was a desperation to finish. It was like, oh, how quick can I do this? How quick can I do yeah. this? And I don't think that's the smart way to go with Usman. Yeah, that's why I feel like Usman might has has a like my theory of this being good for him mm. because he hasn't had a giant training camp of thinking how much of a scary monster mm. Hamzat Chemayev is. Yeah. You know, he's he's heard of him and he's like, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, th- until, until, you know, until we fight, let's see. It's same like John Jones versus a Johnny Walker. Like, yeah. all right, let, let's see first. But now it's it's a short time. It's, it's just going there and, and doing it. And if he's patient, mm. he might be able to catch Chemayev trying to rush a finish mm-hmm, mm-hmm, because mm-hmm. we saw him against Gilbert Burns get a little bit overly excited in the fight. Yeah, and, and he did slow down and he was hurt, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and you can just imagine that Usman establishing that jab and just bloodying up his nose and making his breathing difficult mm-hmm. and, and just kind of managing the pace of the fight. Yeah, for yeah. sure I could see that. But Hamza has a disgusting jab. He does have a disgusting jab. When, yes, it, like sometimes he's like swinging it and then he's like, no, wait, I'm just going to jab you. But <laughs> like he did that to uh, I- Ikram. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. That jab was nasty. Yeah. It just kind of like hit him in the nose slash like chin and folded him in. And he does have that nice rear uppercut as well. Mm. And he just was bam, which is cool because a lot of the times against wrestlers, they they try and like fake an uppercut, right? Yeah. Like don't let it change, you're going to come into an uppercut. And then he's like, sprawl, you're going to come into an uppercut or I'm going to let it change and take you down. Yeah. Yeah. So he like used that reverse thing against them, which is it's pretty, it's awesome. I mean, he's just like, aside from the Gilbert Burns fight, he's just, he's just rolling through people. <clears throat> you know, and especially because, so like he came into the UFC undefeated. He was what, f- second round... Second round uh, knockout, first round submission, first round knockout, f- first round submission to punches. That's never good, is it? 35 seconds, tap to strikes. Um, knockout, first round, that's against uh, Alice Garov, who's on this card. Bravo choke, which is what he just won uh, his fight against Kevin Holland with, and then he made his UFC debut. And then it was John Phillips, Reese McKee, where he, they, they landed like two strikes in, mm. and re- you know received 100 and something between them. And then he moved up to middleweight and just that that corkscrew pressure against Mershaw was just perfect. Like if you could draw a diagram of pressuring somebody into the fence and stopping them. Yeah. Like that was there was it was there was no wasted energy there at all. 
Really, really clever finish. Good pressure. Lined him up perfect. Single punch, knocked him out. You know what I mean? It's just like like what he's been able to do to people. The only person that's really caused him any problems was Gilbert Burns, and that was because he was able to... I mean, I think there were two things. I think, first of all, Gilbert Burns is physically very strong and difficult to handle in the grappling range in any range uh, just because he's got a good fundamental understanding of grappling. And then second of all, he's got really heavy kicks. And there were a few times where he was hammering that kick to the body. Yeah, you know to the I mean? leg as well. Yeah, yeah. But I, th I think to the body, I think that's what that's what softened Chimaev up a little bit and gassed him a bit. So like... Like if I'm Usman, I'm I'm looking at that and I'm thinking, okay, I can I need to put him in that state, and then I can win this fight in either range. But until he's in that state, he's an absolute nightmare. And while ever he's in that state, I'm gonna have to expect to be on the back foot. Yeah. Plus the pressure Jamayev <clears throat> must be on to in this fight. Yeah. Yeah. Like. <laughs> Which way are you going? Hmm. <clears throat> I don't know. Oh, you don't know. I, I'm not sure if I'm honest. I'm actually leaning towards Usman. I have been talked it out and had this conversation and I did the war room and uh, I chatted with the sub radio guys last night. So I've kind of talked through the main and co-main event a little bit and kind of heard my own arguments out mm -hmm. loud. I, I'm I'm actually I'm thinking I don't know whether I'm going to see I don't know whether I'm going to see it the same the the kind of kind of control out of Chemayev that he needs to to overcome someone like Usman because I don't think he can do what he did to Kevin Holland to Usman. Man, but it is crazy being like Chemayev. Like I've seen Usman walk around and people, you know, will like, you know, say hello to him and mm. stuff and be like, oh. But when in like in London, when Hamza walked out, there needed to be like 20 security guards to yeah. stop from people. And they're going, Hamza, and like, like crazy. I've never seen anything like yeah. it. He's a superstar, isn't he? He's a... Yeah. Uh, yeah, I, I don't I don't know. I just I feel like like he's 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 had such strong performances all the way through. But like I, I mean even like even I'm just looking at his record now. Even you watch the Jack Hermanson fight, uh, um wrestling match. Like Hermanson's not he, like his primary skill set isn't really wrestling. He's a really awkward striker with really good ground and pound, right? He's got yeah. good top pressure, but like you don't necessarily think of him as a wrestler. Like he's, a lot of his takedowns are kind of trips and spins and stuff. Even in that matchup, there were moments where Chimaev, like he just looked a little bit laboured from from the wrestling exchanges, and I, and I feel like Usman's got the wrestling, and he's not having the big weight cut down to one seventy, so he's not having to do the big refuel, so he's going to come in a lot fresher than he normally feels, probably one hundred ninety five, two hundred pounds, yeah, and he's he's got five minutes in the gas tank to wrestle hard. I feel confident, even even if he's got knee injuries. Because he knows if he gets through that first round and he gets he gets those big deep breaths out of Chimaev and he starts to land on his heel with his front foot like he was against Gilbert Burns, I'm like, here we go. I've yeah. got him where I need him now. I just wonder if he still has the same confidence that he was able to knock out uh, Masvidal with. You know? but, but he's, I don't know, but he's, but he's taken this fight. I mean, I think that's a statement of confidence. Yeah, it, it is a statement of confidence, but it can also be a statement of how much money you're going to give me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah it's kind of either or yeah I, I don't know I, I feel like uh, I, I feel like Usman wouldn't take a fight unless he was confident he was going to he was going to win yeah you know like, and, I, and I think he like this is what I said that this is what uh, what I was thinking when you were talking about the, the benefit of, of uh, Usman not doing a training camp because he's not had all this time to think about how scary Chemayev is mm. but that's that's based on the assumption that that Usman looks at him and thinks he's a challenge, right? Because Usman's perspective of of a fighter like Chimaev might be very different. Like I'd look at Chimaev and go, "Holy moly!" Like he would, he would take me down, tie my wrist up, elbow me into the canvas. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like it would be a nightmare to fight him. But then Usman must look at him and go, "Well, he can do this, but I can do this, and he's going to do this, but I can do this." And he rushes things because he's only twelve fights into his career, and like. Usman might have a completely different perspective of him. So when the call came through, it's like, do you want to fight Chimaev? He's like, yeah. And at, and at middleweight, sign me up. You know what I mean? Yeah. He, he, might, he might see this as the as the Floyd Mayweather Canelo situation. Yeah, getting right him before. Like get get him now. Like put a loss on his record that that everyone will go be able to look back to and go, ah, yeah, but Mayweather beat him. Yeah. Right. 
Well, the same as, for example, Islam has. Mm. And the same as, what was it, Alex Hernandez has over, like, Benio Dariush. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, what? <laughs> yes, yeah, it's, it's uh, I, I, yeah. I don't know. I'm kind of leaning towards Usman, if I'm honest. I feel like I feel like he might be able to. He might be able to weather an early storm in the first four or five minutes, and then establish his jab, and just kind of just kind of sit at a steady pace of like this is what just 15 minutes. Mm. Perfect. I'm I'm picking Usman by decision. Yeah. Yeah. I, I like I I can honestly see it, but I'm gonna pick Hamza. Yeah. I mean, honestly, I think that's the logical choice. What does Tapology say? I think that's the logical choice, but I don't know. I just, I like the wild card. 75, Chimaya, 25, yeah. Usman. I, I, I like the wild card in this one. I like the, the, the experience and the fact that he's moving up a weight class on short notice. It's the Bisping effect when he won the belt off Rockhold, isn't it? You know mm. what I mean? Walked off a movie set and into the octagon and took the belt. <laughs> <laughs> this next one. All right. So main event. Gonna, yeah, main event. Okay. The topology on this, though, is... 45% Volkanovski, 55 Makachev. Even really? though they both took the fight on the same amount of short notice and they're up a weight class. Mm. Crazy. That's interesting. I wonder what it was before the fight was remade with Volk. I wonder if people were, were as split uh, 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 as that on the Charles Oliveira one. Is it there? Uh, Yeah, I could probably check it. Let me see. Do a, do a teletape and I'll check it. Do 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 the teletape. Do the... Do the do the do the tell tape. All right, before you do it, Oliveira forty one, Makachev fifty nine. Okay. So so slightly more in favor of Volkanovski winning it then. What is he at forty five percent? Did you say? Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah, interesting. Yeah. And then on the last fight, on their last fight, it was sixty six percent Makachev, thirty four percent Volkanovski. Mm. So now more people. Obviously, this is a lot less amount of predictions because this one has 5,263 and the other one's like 1,400. Mm. So it might change, you know, like l closer to the fight, but that's significantly giving him an 11% more credit mm. yeah. for maybe winning, Yeah, which is interesting. Which is interesting. Especially because, oh, you know, Usman is doing kind of the same thing. I didn't grab my notepad. Yeah, no, for, for sure. It's, it's a... Yeah, I I think this is a different situation. Like like I watched this back a few times. Like we we've talked about this a little bit already, haven't we? This because I sat and watched it twice and scored it both times, and I, I felt the same both times. Well, let me do stats first. So Makachev's at twenty four and one. Alexander Volkanovsky twenty six and two. Uh, four inch height advantage for Makachev. One inch reach advantage for Volkanovsky. Same mm -hmm. thing with Chemaev and uh, and Usman. Height yeah. advantage one side, reach advantage on the other wingspan wide back wide shoulders you know that's what Volk and uh, and uh, Usman are, uh, are bringing to the table anyway what was I saying so I had the last fight four rounds first four rounds to Makachev I scored the last round for Volkanovski mm -hmm. and there were a couple of rounds in there that were close rounds second and third round were, were close rounds first round was a clear 10-9 for me to Makachev based on the fact that he um landed that kind of forearm shot and put Volk down on one knee and then was able to take him down. Second and third round were a little bit closer. Second round, Volk was doing some really nice things with that right hook to the body and with the inside low kick. But, and again, I'm watching it in hindsight, but watching it in hindsight, I still felt like Makachev did better work and landed better shots. So like, I, I had Makachev winning up until the very last round when he... He tried a couple of takedowns. Volkanovski scrambled really well and then pressured him and then hurt him with that right hand. Mm. So then I'm going that last round for Volkanovski. And I, there were good moments in it, you know, where he was defending the neck attack and stuff, but he still had Makachev on his back. You know, yeah. he was still losing in that position, even if he was smiling to the cameras and punching him in the face. Yeah, but you know? also when you're watching it, you're watching it with a crowd. That was very pro Volkanovski. Exactly. Yeah. That <laughs> yeah. was like going for Volkan. And now we're gonna watch it in a crowd, very pro uh, Makachev. Yeah. So that's yeah. like a big, a big difference. Mm. I think I think Makachev is gonna look far more dominant this time around. I think he's gonna have taken like the thing is as well. He was training for for Charles Oliveira, who is a an unpredictable nightmare on the feet and an unpredictable nightmare on the ground. Mm. Right. I don't feel like Volkanovski presents as many problems he, the problems that he presents are, are, are serious problems to deal with but i feel like makachev already dealt with them yeah right 
Like we were talking about the gym today, when he travels through range, he was running straight into a tie clinch or he was running straight into a punch or running straight into a level change at times. Yeah, and that's also because Islam is now a lot more patient. Mm. And this this is one of the fighters that I mean that 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 knockout that he received changed everything. Yeah, for sure. And he became so much more patient and, and it made him a better fighter for it. Mm. And because he's had that, and I don't know how much it affected him being, you know, in Australia when he fought Volkanovski, but he was, he was just kind of, what do you call that when they let the clay play go and you shoot it? Yeah, clay pigeon shooting. Yes. He was kind of doing that to his head. <laughs> yeah, yeah, he was a little bit. Like, <laughs> was like, like sniping him a yeah, little bit. Like, yeah, like, exactly. Yeah. Like trying to, to see, instead of thinking about covering the distance, because that was kind of what Volkanovsky was doing, mm. right? Covering the distance and landing his shots to get out of the way and stuff. He was just, I know that you're coming to me, so I'm just going to wait and, you know, Sparta 300, bam. Exactly. Bam into me. Bam. He was just, yeah, he, he, had, he had his timing down. And, that, you know, and I feel like this time around, especially with the experience of the fifth round, we're going to see a much more calculated Makachev. I think he, I think they they probably straight away before even uh, Charles Oliveira and this matchup were, was even a thing they they'd already gone over the Volkanovski fight and pulled it apart pulled the training camp yeah. apart right that th you shouldn't have done this in this position this is instead of this and blah 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 because this was the one that Khabib wasn't in it mm -hmm. right mm -hmm. and then Khabib had I think he had told him like oh you should have done all these things and he replied like well you should have been there to tell me these things <laughs> so. So you can tell yeah. that they, uh, like, that's that yeah. to me tells me they definitely did that. Yeah, for sure. I bet you got some good notes off Khabib. Yeah. Um, I'm picking Makachev. <clears throat> I'm picking Makachev. I wish Volkanovsky just had more time. Yeah. This is... I wish we all had more time, but it's it's the state of affairs, isn't it? Yeah, but like, <laughs> but, 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 it's so, unfair okay. for this fight to be such a short notice for him because he's al because he's already lost once. It doesn't matter though, does it? Yes, because it does. It doesn't because it, it's the UFC. Like, so it, it, yeah, like, UFC could you know play whatever narrative they want. Of course they can. But at the same time, everyone is going to remember that Volkanovski stepped up on two weeks notice after having a surgery, what, three months ago? Yeah. Stepped up on short notice, stepped in to fight Makachev again, even even though the last fight was an incredibly difficult five round affair like this the, the the respect that comes with that makes this decision that he's made unforgettable for sure but he so even if he loses by but first he round likes to stoppage win. of course he does he's like... but he's won 26 times if he loses a third time it's not the end of the world and it's not his weight class and he's taking it on short notice so there's no pressure like, I agree with you i think he has the same benefits that kamar usman does coming in i know but he has I feel like he can be double champ. I feel like if he if he really had like a good game plan, he could apply as much pressure as he would need to, to like, to beat Makish or get a lot closer than he was in his last fight. So so why can't he benefit from not having a full training camp where he's been going over this and going over it in his mind? He's been doing it far more casually, which is probably more beneficial not the because there's not because Makachev is not the same. <laughs> Like no, he's not. So how can you prepare for him? No, no. So what, well what, what I'm saying, <laughs> what I'm saying is like fighting Makachev is not the same as fighting Chimaev. No, because Makachev is a lot more mature in the way that he fights because he's had more fights and he's had that like one learning fight. So he's a lot more of a composed, complete fighter. Lethal, yeah, for sure. L like, yeah, that's why I think he's going to win. Great mind. Yeah, that's why I think he's going to win. I know. Me too. <laughs> 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 and I would like to not pick against Volkanovski because I really like Volkanovski. Yeah, for sure, I, <laughs> for sure. But, but and but, I feel like I could, I could make a more, you know, I could pick for Volkanovski okay. had he had a bit more training time for him. For sure. But what have we also learned from watching Volkanovski this week? That he's a badass. Yeah, he's a badass. Yeah, <laughs> but you can also pick up bad habits from him, and the bad habits that if you watch him fight <laughs> Makachev, he paid for those bad habits. Yeah. Right? Look, Volkanovski is an incredible fighter. And, and at featherweight, I think he can hold on to that belt for as long as he can stay healthy. Yeah. Also, it makes me a bit annoyed that Ilya is going to fight Max Holloway for the interim belt. Mm -hmm. Like, didn't they just give an interim belt to somebody at the 145 and then he come in and like, you know, like flatten him out? <laughs> yeah. Why were you just going to give another interim? 
Well, because, you know, posters. You know? But, like, uh, that's disrespectful. You can't, you can't I'm put, taking this fight on a short notice <laughs> to save your card, because if not, who is Makachev going to fight that is going to be as exciting? Yeah. And then, as a, your, as a thank you, you make an interim belt at my weight class. Yeah, but <clears throat> it's just drama, isn't it? You know, it's just drama. He doesn't care. I understand what you're saying. I'm not a big fan of interim belts generally. Yeah, but I'm just annoyed for Volkanovski. Oh, yeah, yeah. E- More annoyed if, than he probably is. Yeah, probably. Well, I'm a fan. I can do what I want. I can do what I want. <laughs> <laughs> so you're going for Makachev, are you? Yeah. Yeah? Yeah. How? Decision or stoppage? I oh, hang on. stoppage. Oh, yeah. Yeah, you think? like third round or something. Yeah, with what? TK or submission? I think he might like Kimura him. A uh, Kimura, you're in the you're in a Kimura <laughs> I'm in mode. A Kimura you? Mode yeah, mode uh, yeah, today. yeah. Mm. Yeah. What did he have surgery on? Was it an elbow? Yeah. Oh, that's not a good sign, is it? Exactly. Oh. Well, I, I know that's a shoulder lock, but I know, still, but still, you don't I want think... someone twisting on it if you just had an elbow surgery. Exactly. Plus, he had that nasty Kimura against Dan Hooker. Mm. Maybe he's just gonna do it. Uh, Volkanovski, although yeah. Dan Hooker has like a longer body for he it. He does have a longer body. But uh, Volkanovski has really long arms, mm. but his head is like, I just feel like if you pressed his head against anywhere, it would hurt. <laughs> <laughs> I know. He looks like he just has like, like yeah, an extra hard head. For sure. And he's got that rough stubble as well, which gives you <laughs> friction burns when he's using head position. Yeah, I know exactly what you mean. I bet he's an absolute nightmare. <laughs> But I, I, I think uh, I think Makachev gets it done, and I can see him. I can see him either finishing him with that rear naked choke or flattening him out from top position on his back. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Like taking his back, hooks in, flattening him out. After I hope to one day train with Volkanovski. I hope Volkanovski yeah. doesn't watch this, and then he's like, I when he's I got, go to train, I think he's got better things to do. If I'm honest, <laughs> when I go to train with him, he's I gonna mean, be like, most you of you have Makachev. got better things to do. You're, you're still sitting here an hour in. You're like, oh my goodness, I've got like. <laughs> washing up to hang and it's better than instagram scrolling come on i'm funny it depends it depends there's a lot of good dog videos on instagram they, they suck me in yeah that's like, when i know you're watching a dog video when you're like smiling when i'm smiling it's the only time i smile <laughs> like these a days. dorky smile <laughs> 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 all yeah. right okay yeah peace is that it, <laughs> is, it is that it <laughs> they close the show with that peace you can leave now. <laughs> well, you said everyone's got better things to do. <laughs> they got better things than to listen to us outro this. I've just realized it's 6.15 and I've not eaten yet. So I think uh, I think it might be time to to get me some food. Not, go not, go not beans you. on toast yourself. You. I am going to. I'm going to. And I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to wait until you're cooking one of the Vortex meals and then eat my meal at the same time so I can smell the buffalo chicken and eat my bean toast. And like, oh yeah, but... but you know, I bet I'll use the imagination. Good food, yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, You've yeah. probably got something wonderful to eat. I do. Yeah. Peace. <laughs> Enjoy the fights. We'll see you next time. <laughs>